The Grand Exchange is one of RuneScape's most popular updates ever, but players used to absolutely hate it until Jagex tricked them into liking it. This is Varrock West Bank the trading hub of old school RuneScape back in 2014. At all hours of the day and night, there were people here exchanging goods. You might be wondering, why not just use the Grand Exchange? Well, it didn't exist yet. As you may know, old school RuneScape was created using an old backup of RuneScape from August of 2007, which was made just a few months before the Grand Exchange was released. So when old school launched, players also went back to the old way of trading, standing around for hours spamming what they had or wanted. Today, this may sound annoying as you can get literally anything you want in seconds from the Grand Exchange, but players loved this system. So much so that when the idea of the Grand Exchange being introduced to old school was brought up, they actively campaigned against it. Why was this inefficient, time-consuming, and downright exhausting system so beloved? Well, everybody has a different idea of what makes old school RuneScape old school. For some, it's the graphics, or the combat system, or being able to act like you're 13 again in Winter Todd chat, and for many, it was the way players traded goods. From the moment RuneScape was born in 2001 until the Grand Exchange was introduced in late 2007, all trades were done by sitting around, doing nothing, and spamming. It was very, very old school. So when old school launched, players wanted that true old school experience, and the Grand Exchange just wasn't a part of that. So they all set up shop in places like Falador Park and Varrock West Bank and did exactly what they did 10 years ago as kids. But there's a reason the Grand Exchange exists in old school today. This trading system had more problems than you can imagine, and as old school grew, those problems started to return. Let's start with the basic ones. From day one, one, buying and selling sucked because you had to sit there and type over and over again, buying Sarah Doman Brews 10k. This would cause some strain on the hands, especially if you couldn't find a seller for a couple minutes, or even worse, hours. So many players turned to downloading autotypers, programs that could spam for you. They were against the game rules, but because their usage was so widespread, Jagex just overlooked them. But if you're trying to sell the same item as a player moderator for a better price, let's just say that it wasn't a rare occurrence that you'd be temporarily muted soon after. For a good boy like me, I didn't want to do anything even remotely close to rule breaking, so I didn't download one. But mainly because I already had two mutes on my account and didn't want to risk it any further. But those that did download one got a pretty big advantage. They could spam faster and use effects like color changing text more easily, as they didn't have to sit there typing the codes out. But not all autotypers were created equal. Quite a few actually had malware built in that would send your account details tails off to the autotyper's creator, who would then clean out your bank. Even today, the internet and RuneScape can still be a scary place, which is why I use the sponsor of today's video, ExpressVPN. ExpressVPN is a cheap, reliable, and easy to use VPN service. You just sign up, download and install it, then press the big button to get connected. Just like that, you have access to VPN servers in 160 locations over 94 countries. Now, you might be thinking, why would I want a VPN? Well, first of all, many internet service providers record your browsing data and then sell it to advertisers. ExpressVPN locks them out, but having a VPN doesn't help if they also record your browsing data. Well, ExpressVPN doesn't. They have a no logs policy and their privacy policy was audited by PwC, one of the big four accounting firms. So if all this sounds good to you, find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free with a subscription by visiting expressvpn.com slash colonello or clicking the link in the description below. But let's say you downloaded a clean autotyper, there's no PMODs around, and we're now ready to purchase some Sarah Brews. You find a seller, you do the trade, and you walk away happy. You go to do some bossing, take a sip of your brew, and nothing happens. Looks like you didn't check the second trade screen because you got sold strength potions, which look a lot like brews. The market was full of scams like this. And sure, you may go, just check the trade screen, idiot. And yeah, I kinda agree, but everybody makes mistakes. Scams aside, let's say you've just completed a medium clue scroll and got a red boater hat. Wow, this looks cool. Surely it has some value. Well, it does, but you'll never 
never sell it. The item is so obscure, the chances of you finding someone willing to purchase it in a sea of text is next to none. Someone in a completely different time zone could want a red boater really bad, but you'll never see their messages because you're offline and asleep while they're playing. So if you had no use for the boater, it would either stay in your bank forever or you'd just drop it. Players were frustrated with these issues, but still liked the system overall. Instead of putting the burden on Jagex to come up with a solution, the players actually took matters into their own hands. RuneScape fan site Zybez put up a market page on their website where anybody could put up a listing. You could go, hey, I have a red boater, I'm selling it for 5k, this is my username, message me if you want it. And the system worked pretty well. Back in the day, I did nothing but shop you and Magic Logs, sell them through Zybez meetup, and even used Zybez to buy my first dragon axe, which cost my whole bank at the time. I don't mean to sound like an old boomer, but you guys have it really good these days. Back on topic, Zybez was awesome, and it wasn't long before the bulk of trading was done through it. Zybez even did a pretty good job of curbing the scamming problem, as known scammers had their usernames blacklisted from the site, but it was still far from perfect. Although Zybez was a great resource, it could still be manipulated. Players would list items under fake names in an attempt to manipulate prices. Oftentimes, they could trick players into thinking a valuable item had crashed, they buy it from that player, and then flip it later at its normal price. This was later partially fixed in early 2014 by requiring account verification, but it was a change a lot of players disliked and distrusted. But in game, even more problems were occurring. Now, even before the Grand Exchange existed, flipping was always a thing. Flipping is where players buy an item for a low price and sell it later for a higher price. But now, about a year in old school's creation, it wasn't just players flipping items. Now, bots were doing it too. Flipping bots were incredibly easy to make compared to other types, and they were incredibly profitable. Jagex was working on anti-bot solutions, but they didn't have the manpower to tackle these flipping bots with such a small team. Legitimate players weren't having a great time either. Much of the initial hype and nostalgia had worn off. No Nobody wanted to come home from work anymore after being yelled at by their boss and type selling five lobsters for 20 minutes. They wanted to pound a drink and go hit some god wars with the boys. Speaking of which, you can join my clan historians if you're looking for some people to boss with. Anyway, most people had also been playing long enough to accumulate quite a bit of stuff in their bank. Most of it valuable, but too obscure to spend time selling it off. As a result of all this, some players were starting to come around to the idea of a new system of exchange, but the Grand Exchange was still given the evolution of combat treatment. Mention it and be downvoted into oblivion. When a priority poll was run in March of 2014, a solution to trading issues was voted the second most important update players wanted to see. While Jagex started to figure out what that system might be, they made some changes. A new auto chat feature was introduced in mid-2014, where you you could type a message once and your character would spam it until you turned it off. This didn't really do much besides maybe give some peace of mind to paranoid players like me who wouldn't download an auto typer. However, auto chat was off by default and most players didn't know it existed or if they did, didn't know how to turn it on. Auto typing programs could also be configured to display multiple messages in a loop, but auto chat could only display one message at a time. So many continued to use auto typers and players who used auto chat were oftentimes at a disadvantage. After this, Jagex ran another poll, this time asking players what they'd like to see in this new trading solution. The poll showed players didn't really know what they wanted. Votes for things like offline trading and not having to communicate with anyone to trade items were split almost right down the middle. The only thing highly voted against was attacks. There's only one thing people hated more than the Grand Exchange, taxes. Using this feedback, Jagex drew up the idea of an auction house, which is kind of exactly like the Grand Exchange, but worse. Really, the only difference between the two is that you could browse players' individual listings. Just like the Grand Exchange, you didn't have to communicate with anyone, and trades could be completed all through the system. Now, Jagex did make a few mock-up screenshots for this concept. Unfortunately, the links on the forum post were dead, but I thought maybe the Wayback Machine could have some copies. So I opened the links. One is a picture of RuneScape 3, another is is of this, and the last one is, I kid you not, a woman who has had her top replaced with poorly photoshopped boobs. Luckily, the Wayback Machine
screen has other timestamps of these links, and I was able to find the real screenshots, but I'm very glad I didn't do research for this video in public. I don't really know how these archived links work, but quite a few of the other screenshots are RuneScape related, so someone at Jagex might have some explaining to do. Anyway, here it is. It's literally just a photoshopped Grand Exchange with a different name and slight changes. A day later, the entire concept was scrapped. They basically said, we still don't know what you want, so we're just gonna let you vote on everything. They proposed the basic idea of a trading post where you could post offers to buy and sell items that will be visible to everyone. Every other feature besides listing items was left up to a poll. Offline trading failed, leaving listings up while offline failed, being able to trade items through the post rather than having to meet up and trade just barely failed. Literally, the only thing that passed was the basic first question, the ability to post offers that players could look at when they visit a trading post. You'd think at this point they'd just scrap the idea altogether, because what could this system really do? It's like Zybez, but worse. Trading posts would be placed in banks, whereas Zybez could be accessed from anywhere. In fact, it was even built into the most popular client at the time. But Jagex decided to go through with the idea, and six months later, it was ready. Here's exactly how the players reacted to it. Used to suck his shit. Get out! Not only was it worse than Zybez, the post also launched with a number of big issues. Players could post an offer, turn off their private messages, and leave their friends chat, meaning they could list something and provide absolutely no way for someone to contact them. Or let's say you have a super rare item, have no intention of selling it, and just want to show off that you have it. So people would list their item on a trading post at a ridiculous price to just show off. As stupid as it sounds, yeah, people actually did this. Another big problem was that you couldn't post buy offers. You could only list items you have for sale, not ones you were interested in purchasing. If the item you wanted to buy wasn't available for the price you wanted, you'd either have to wait for somebody to post the item at the price you want, or message a seller and haggle with them. The cherry on top was that because Zybez was superior in so many ways, but some players now use the trading post, you'd have to check both places if you were looking to get an item for the best price you could. One nice feature the post had over Zybez was that if you didn't actually have the item, you couldn't list it on the post. In fact, when listing the item, the post would hold the item for you until you removed it. On Zybez, you could say you had an item for sale even if you didn't own it. So the trading post could reduce things like price manipulation on some items by forcing you to have them. But there was a slight problem. Removing your items from the trading post didn't require you to put in your bank pin. So if you got hacked, somebody could log into your account, yoink the item out of the post without needing the pin, and trade it over to their account. Now, when they added the trading post to the game, they also said, hey, we know this thing kind of sucks, so we're gonna pull some expansions for it next week. Two days later, they make a post displaying the expansion options, and the first one is literally turn it into the Grand Exchange. There's some pretty good fixes for other solutions below it, but man, if the first one is replace it entirely, you know it sucks. So the team made an odd decision. Rather than pull these potential changes to the trading post, they instead said, we're just gonna pull adding the Grand Exchange. If it passes, we'll remove trading posts and add the Grand Exchange north of Varrock, but if it fails, then we'll pull improvements for the post. You might think, why not improve the system that took six months to create, rather than scrap it entirely for something brand new? Well, an employee, Mod Matt K, had said in the past that the only reason they didn't pull the Grand Exchange is because the team didn't think it would pass. So why now? Jagex, whether they had planned it or not, had created the perfect storm for the Grand Exchange to pass the polls. So players started out saying, no GE, we hate the GE. All my homies hate the GE. We like the current system, but it needs improvements. So Jagex offered these improvements, but once they were implemented into the game and the players didn't like them, they were now sort of stuck. Trading could never go back to the way it was before but the current system was now even more of a burden and didn't work the way everyone hoped it would. Even so, just getting this system working took over six months, and making even simple changes to it would be difficult and time consuming. Remember how I said the backup used to build old school was just a few months before the original Grand Exchange released? Well, it turns out the majority of the code for the Grand Exchange existed in this backup, and the gaps could be filled in using code from RuneScape 3. 
All Jagex would have to do is patch it together. And just their luck, another Jagex game, Transformers Universe, had just been cancelled, and Ian Gower needed a new project to work on. He coded the original GE and was happy to work on old schools if the players wanted it. Well, players were already frustrated with the trading post and didn't want to wait months to get a decent version of it. Plus, most of the proposed changes would just make it a knockoff GE anyway. So, just two months after the trading post was added, Jagex pulled the Grand Exchange and it passed just barely with a 76.2% yes vote. I personally believe that had trading posts never existed, we wouldn't have gotten the Grand Exchange in old school, especially when players were previously so opposed to it. Although Jagex likely didn't plan it, the trading post update sort of tricked players into voting for the Grand Exchange because the alternative was so much worse. For more early old school history like this, check out the video I did about RuneScape's biggest expansion, Zaya, and why when it launched, it was a total failure.